G'day everyone, welcome to Lubrication Explained. Today I want to try something a little bit different. Um, we're going to cover a story from lubrication history. It's a story of how the definitions of minerals and synthetics kind of got blurred and ultimately changed. I think to the detriment of the consumer, but I think, you know, history will decide. Um, important disclaimer that I need to kind of state up front. This was ultimately decided as a legal case. So it, they went to court. Um, it was actually Castrol versus Mobile. They went to court and they decided there, I'm just kind of giving a recounting from the documents that I've read. I obviously wasn't there. I wasn't there in the courtroom and I'm not a legal scholar. So I need to put all those caveats in there. Um, so maybe my represented representation of uh, both the cases is not going to be perfectly accurate, but I think it gets to the rough gist of the story. So anyway, let's get into it. All right, so gather around kids. I'm going to tell you a story. So a long time ago in a galaxy, you know, far, far away, or at least not exactly a galaxy far, far away. It was, of course, Earth, and it was the 1990s. Um, back then, I think the definitions of minerals and synthetics were much simpler, right? So we had minerals which came effectively out of the ground, right? So they started their life as crude oil, and we had synthetics, which were molecules that kind of came out of the chemicals industry. So on the side of minerals, we had effectively the first three groups, you know, so API group one, group two, and group three. And these were all products that started their life as crude oil, and then they were refined, and then they got turned into lubricants. Pretty simple definition. On the side of the synthetics, you had more or less everything from group four and group five, except for the naphthenic base oils and maybe the silicon based ones. So polyalpha olefins, polyalkylene glycols, esters, alkylated naphthalenes, that kind of thing. So really something that you would find um, you know, in the chemicals industry. I would argue that these were much simpler times and more idealistic times. But then again, the 90s were the time of Gulf War One. I guess there was, you know, Kosovo, Chechnya, also the Rwandan genocide. So maybe the 90s weren't that good after all. Although, you know, maybe we can go back to this nice picture and just put up a picture of, you know, Game Boys and Street Fighter. That's how I remember the 90s anyway. So uh, what kind of disrupted this balance? Well, the bad guys of the story are marketers. <laughs> Um, I have nothing against marketers. Actually, this picture's incomplete. He should be holding a cup of coffee. But ultimately, um, what happened was uh, Castrol had, I think it was an existing product, but it either went through a rebrand or maybe a reformulation. And it was Castrol Syntec, which was the, the, the product in question. So Castrol had this fancy new formulation, as I understand it, and they wanted to advertise it in the market. And back in the 90s, the primary way that you did that was through TV advertising. So Castrol, you know, put ran ads on TV, which asserted that Syntec had a unique molecular bonding and that it had, it gave superior protection compared with all other motor oils. So that's a pretty broad statement to make. Um, you know, I would imagine that they ran it past the legal department because the legal department's um, or at least in my experience with working with them, tend to be huge and very cautious about what you can say in public. So evidently they felt it was it was warranted. Now Mobile, in particular, strongly objected to this. Um, I think the technical term would be that they were meme grumpy cat. Um, they contended it's not a PAO anymore, and that's probably a quite an important bone of contention because Mobile kind of spearheaded the whole PAO movement. Um, they were really the first ones to, you know, they obviously had the Mobile One brand, which started off, you know, the PAO revolution in, in motor oils. Um, and I think at the time, they were probably the biggest manufacturer of PAO base stocks as well. Um, they contended that the formulation was actually worse than before. So previously, Syntec, I believe, was a, a full PAO and Mobile had done some kind of tear aparts of the Syntec product and had determined that it wasn't all PAO anymore um, and therefore it was a worse formulation. They also argued 
it's not superior to everything else, right? So that's a really broad statement. And they said that that was misleading to the consumer. So as all good um, technical engineering debates are decided, the legal eagles got involved. So of course, you know, they called engineers as witnesses and that kind of thing. But as far as I can tell, the basic premise of the argument around the definition of synthetic fell down to two core arguments. So Castrol contended that if you can take a natural product and break it apart and re-refine it to the point where it is unrecognizable to anything that would occur in nature, then it's a synthetic. So if I could come up with an analogy, if you took timber and turned it into sawdust and turned it into you know, an engineered timber product, then I guess Castro would argue that that's synthetic because the type of timber, like engineered timber, does not occur in nature and therefore it is synthetic. That's the, the best kind of analogy that I can come up with. Now they had on their side, they called a couple of expert witnesses that I think had Nobel prizes in chemistry. So, um, you know, calling in the beep guns. On mobile side, they argued, no, synthetics are actually formulated from very small molecules that you then react together to form larger molecules. So they're not, they don't come from crude oil or any kind of natural petroleum product. So they have to start as kind of a, a, a pure uh, base stock like ethylene, for example, and you turn it into a polyethyl olefin. On their side, they had documentation from the EPA. Uh, they also had the agreement of Exxon might seem a bit weird, but this was pre the Exxon and mobile mergers. So Exxon and mobile were actually uh, competitors in the marketplace at that time. And they also supplied evidence from Castrol's own website, which indicated uh, that, that Castrol had documented a very similar definition. So ultimately, I don't know what went on, you know, uh, within the court itself, uh, but the, the judge, and I guess probably the jury, I don't really know how the American system works here, you know, tap, tap, tap. They made a decision, and that decision was um, much like Jesus turning water into uh, box wine, which, you know, fun fact, we call that goon in Australia. Um, they basically took the Syntec product and gave it the blessing and said it has been sufficiently refined to the point where the performance is good enough that you can effectively call that a synthetic. Uh, so, end of story, right? But it did introduce a whole bunch of complexity for Mr. Marketing. So, oh, sorry, forgot the coffee. Uh, now we have terms like semi-synthetic, synthetic technology, my favorite, synthetic fortified, which I think kind of muddy the waters because now what do all those really mean? I, to my knowledge, there aren't really formal definitions around what these mean. And so the percentages of, you know, let's say PAO or GTL or synthetic esters or even hydrocracked group threes, which are now considered synthetic, um, it, it's really difficult to know what's actually in the formulation. Now, the manufacturers, I think, would probably contend that it doesn't really matter what's in the product. What matters is the performance of the product. So they would generally advertise based on performance rather than components. And I think there's a lot of sense to that too. You don't, you know, you care about the overall, and I've, I've done videos on this before, you care about the overall performance of your phone as opposed to necessarily the specs of the RAM and, you know, the CPU and all that kind of stuff. Ultimately, these are pretty confusing times. Um, if you want to buy a lubricant for your car, it's not very easy to, you know, differentiate between everything that's on the shelf. And there are so many lubricant types, brands, um, you know, it's very hard to differentiate between them. So it makes it very confusing. Kind of simpler in the industrial world. Generally, when something is advertised as a synthetic in the industrial world, it means a PAO, PAG, AN or ester. Um, Generally, if it's a group three, no matter how you know aggressively hydrocracked it is, it will still be referred to as a mineral in the industrial space. But for vehicles, it is quite tough. 
Anyway, this has been a little bit different. Um, let me know if you liked it or hated it. Again, many disclaimers because I'm not a legal professional. Um, and so this is just what I've been able to gather from reading. But um, otherwise, this has been Lubrication Explained.